Welcome everybody to another episode of From the Bottom Up with David there in Mexico. I don't know if you can see him or not. There you go. Hi, Dave. Oh yeah, and I, I apparently have a nice... The Apostles. <laughs> Jason's joined by Jesus and the Apostles. <laughs> I chose the Last Supper theme. <laughs> This is maybe David's last Sunday in uh, North America for a while, so we'll see. <laughs> but um, yeah, well, I was praying about the topic of the show, and I don't get much until the night before or even in the morning, and I just, I got one line that, I'll see if I can remember, and it's, it's going to have to be revealed from the show, but so I, I'd like the show to be about impertinence. And I didn't even know what the word impertinence really meant. So I looked it up in the dictionary. And in the dictionary it said something like um, rude or disrespectful behavior. And I was, that's just not, doesn't seem right. Then I saw the word inappropriate. And so I, I asked for more clarification. And the definition I got in my mind was the ability to be inappropriate under pressure. So that started to spark some things in my mind. And, yeah, we, as a lot of you know, we have been kind of turning the whole ministry in the sense of with the elders making a lot of the decisions. And I actually had a call with Emily last night down in Mexico, and she was saying she's in meetings all the day, all the time, and so much prayer. First, all the overseers have to be in agreement, which is seven, and then it goes up to the ninjas, which is another four. And then if, if everyone's clear, they go ahead and move on. If not, they put it up to the elders, and I, I kind of burst into laughter because it was like a taste of what many of us have been going through for the past 10 years with a huge amount of prayer around decisions. Every tiny thing, since the ministry is our mind, we put all this prayer into what, what would serve the whole and then kind of expect or have a, a goal that people would follow up. And maybe that goal is the problem and the answer to my question I'm coming into, but I had this experience since I'm kind of the one training the overseers and the ninjas with this new way of communicating and trying to pass on the gifts that we've been given. Yeah, so I did this experiment. I didn't know it was an experiment until the end of the first day, but two days ago, just I had these calls with different ones in the community and it was really yeah, really joyful. And a lot of things were revealed that I had actually passed on in terms of communication over a week ago, and some of them hadn't, hadn't been followed up. And there was a bit of like a shock or a surprise. And so, <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> I never expected that. <laughs> so, so, so I just thought, okay, well, what's the lesson here? Like, everything's always my lesson. And, I'm actually practicing mastery through love because, you know, I've had witnesses in the past like that uh, people feel this wrongness that comes up around me. And we've done shows on this. So I'm not going to go into that. But so I thought, okay, great. So that was my purpose and my intention. But it was, a, it was like this crazy day where every encounter I would have, I would just be so intent on being gentle and loving. And yet then this energy would build up and I would just... I have to go with it. And it would just be da 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 And there were lots of people like, whoa, 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 whoa. But I got many witnesses back afterwards. Oh, thank God, that was the most helpful thing. But there was just these doubt thoughts arising like, really? Is that really mastery through love? And it was all day, like probably 7 in the morning till 4 or 5 p.m. And then I just couldn't, I couldn't even, I don't take it anymore. I didn't want another call where I had to deliver all these things. So I went out with Andy. We went and saw this movie, Alpha. I finally got to see it at this dollar theater in Ogden, actually. And, and I was waiting for the message from the movie. And the message from the movie was, like, okay, here it comes. I could feel the line coming. And then, and then the guy, the main character in the movie, who's being put through all these tests. And Andy and I love the movie because Andy's working on letting go of, of apathy, and if this guy was apathetic for more than 10 seconds, he died. 
So it was a great movie for <laughs> moving through. <laughs> but my line was coming and, it, and finally the guy just laid down in the snow with no cover and said, I need to rest. And then it repeated again a second time in the movie. Here it is again, I need to rest. So I took that as a really strong sign. So the next day I put out this post on the Elders Ninja channel saying, I'm going to step back today and go with Jackie. And I basically practiced the exact opposite. Whenever there was a thought I could just da 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 da, I thought, no, I'm going to totally let go. And my brother has got it. Nothing needs fixing. There's no, no whatever. And we actually had, I went to this ch chiropractor and it'd been a few years and I just put tune up and he, he looked at me, <laughs> he did his thing. He's like, you needed more than a tune up, but I didn't feel anything. So it was just kind of, Fun, but he had this massage chair and relaxed in this massage chair. Then Jackie and I shared a pastry at this nice French patisserie next door. Then we went and did that float that was given to us. This place it was so relaxing. So it, it, just a series of like super restful things with nothing to do, no decisions. I even turned notifications off. And it was really light and I didn't really think of anything in the ministry at all until the end of the day. And I thought, whoa, my mind's starting to come back in. And I lightly touched on some things. So then the third day, which was the next day, the lesson was, the hush of heaven holds my heart today. The hush of heaven holds my heart today. And the key line that struck out was, today you will learn how to actually apply, you know, I, <laughs> I need to do nothing. And somehow it kind of went through my mind that that's like a combination of the first and the second day where one was full doing and there's no way I could step back from it. To say be a meditator in that kind of a state was like, no way. And the next day it was so into this step back meditation, there's no way I was going to get involved in any of the details. And so somehow I thought this was like a lesson of bringing the two together, but it didn't feel complete in my heart. And so I wanted to bring this up in for today's topic because, I don't know, I feel like I want to go into it deeper and I want to... Um, <laughs> just a deeper experience because there's something really beautiful about no holds barred and no hold back and I would actually have a phone call with somebody else that in the ministry and I was firing again and then I, I was like, what's going on? And then she said, you're angry at me. I can't handle it. you're angry at me. And I said, well, Maybe it is anger, but I got to give myself permission to let that come through too. And I actually couldn't even tell, but it felt good saying that. And I remember, David, you told somebody in the community one time that when she was, she would say to you, Why, how can I work with these people? Because I've got this anger that comes up. And you said, well, actually, this is how you're going to work through it. So I'm giving you a lot there to work with, but I thought maybe you can... Just take it away and see what you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, you're just you're just describing um, in very practical ways and very specific ways uh, how the whole healing occurs because the healing occurs when we bring the illusions to the truth. Uh, healing is not going to occur by trying to spiritualize matter, by trying to make uh, temples on this earth, by trying to glorify people, by trying to glorify uh, countries or situations or uh, even rituals. You know, the ego tries to glorify the rituals and it's just more idols and the healing won't occur, but the healing does occur when you bring the illusions to the truth, meaning in your mind. That's what what Frank and uh, Jeffrey were talking about, about the beliefs. The beliefs and the thoughts in the mind are the illusions. And those unconscious beliefs and thoughts have to be allowed up, like Ali Ali Income Free, like uh, every, all dark thoughts and beliefs have to rise up uh, toward the light where they will disappear. And our only function is not to protect them and hide them and push them back down. So the first part, we could say that everyone who comes to this world has dark dreams. Whether they're, they're nighttime dreams or daytime dreams, they're dark. There's betrayal, there's abandonment, there's attack, there's conflict, there's 
all kinds of heaviness and darkness. So it's just uh, the definition of coming to time and space is the belief that darkness is real. So you have dark dreams. And then when you turn yourself over to the Holy Spirit, you are done through. In other words, it's like that song, uh, I think um, Deb and John, Deb just sent me that song, I'm Your Puppet. I don't know if you remember, it was an old song. Du, 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 I'm Your Puppet. It's, you go through a phase where you say to the Holy Spirit, this body is your puppet. You use it in any way that you want. You show me, like St. Francis, you know, prayer, Lord, make me an instrument. You are just praying that with all your heart. And that's where you're, those full days that go from morning to night, where it's just like, doot, 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 doot. you are just used in such a full, full way. Uh, I'm used to these kind of things. Uh, at different times, Lisa and I would, would just revel. We'd be laying on a couch at the end of the day where we'd just been done through in such a huge way that neither of us could even imagine it. We were just laughing, laying on the couch. We'd had so many calls. She maybe had counseled 15 people and we'd have Skype calls and emails and, and gone out to the market to get this and done this. And it's like every second of the day was, was used up by the Holy Spirit. And then we're just laying on the couch, just laughing, going, can you even believe that? Like, you know, like the Bible said, you know, for those who much is given, much will be asked. We were just like, yeah, much will be asked. Like, it's a, this is like unbelievable to go 15 hours, like full on like that. And yet that's the done through phase. So you go from dark dreams to being done through, which the ego doesn't actually like that very much, that phase either, but it doesn't like any of the phases, uh, except the dark dreams, it likes that one. But it, it's the, the, it doesn't like the done through where you're just so, you, at the end of the day, you just sit there and sometimes you do get a smile on your face because you think, unbelievable. And yet, it is believable. And then, the phase you went through where you had your rest day, is when the Spirit starts pulling you back more and more into the mind to teach you that you really aren't personally responsible for any of it. That uh, what's, what is impertinent or what is inappropriate is everything in time and space is impertinent. <laughs> and everything in time and space is in, inappropriate. Why? Because God didn't create it. That's why it's inappropriate. It's inappropriate for the Christ. Time and space is inappropriate for the Christ. Everything of time and space is in, impertinent for the Christ. And who you are is the Christ. I was remembering this quote from the Course, that uh, the only way you ever experience joy in a joyless world is to realize that you're not there. Oh my gosh! That's a pretty powerful quote. The only way you ever experience joy in a joyless place is to realize that you're not there. That's, that is divine logic. That is like nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. So that day of rest that you had where you and Jackie were out and having the pastry and, and you had your notifications off and you weren't really getting any messages, it was like more of just a taste of, okay, relax and flow and come a little closer to divine abstraction. And then the next phase after that is kind of like the dreamer of the dream phase where, you remember Chauncey Gardner? You know, he's so innocent, his eyes are so innocent, he's so clueless, he's so detached from the world and all he says is, I, li I like to watch. That's the I like to watch phase where it's going to become so delightful just to watch just to watch it all uh, and be aware that it's all just a reflection of mind, but that you are the dreamer of the world of dreams and therefore there's no personal responsibility. In fact, awareness of dreaming is your function as a teacher of God, just to stay in that place of I'm aware that I'm dreaming. That's a huge mind training all those steps, all those other things, just to come to the sense that I'm aware that I'm dreaming. Now, how can we make this practical? Well, right now, 
you are having a focus, like, like rules for decision that, that uh, Jeffrey and Frank were just talking about, that they're like, Jeffrey was talking about zooming in on, do I want the problem or do I want the answer? It's, it's actually that pointed, moment by moment, do I want the problem or do I want the answer? Let's make it even a little more simple. Do I want the dark dreams of judgment or do I want the happy, forgiving dreams that the Holy Spirit is offering me? Do I want to watch like Chauncey Gardner? Do I want to behold a forgiven world, a happy dream? So the mind is starting to come more and more, it's getting close to that point where it's starting to realize the power of the mind, the power of choice, and the power of these happy, forgiving dreams. These happy dreams, though, are dreams of non-judgment. There's no control, there's no fixing, there's, there's no trying to arrange, there's no ordering of thoughts going on in happy dreams. These are, are happy dreams of non-judgment, and it's because of the non-judgment that makes them happy. It's like that line in the Course, something to the effect that uh, happy dreams come true, not because the dreams are real, but because of the happiness. Happiness, happy dreams come true could be another way of saying coming to the true perception. Ultimately we know perception is not true, God didn't create perception at all. But true perception or happy dreams or forgiving dreams are all different ways that Jesus talks about this glorious state of of watching the world from a place of pure stillness, pure non-judgment, pure witnessing. And so, you know how much I love that Frank Sinatra song about fairy tales come true. You could, we can redo that. Happy dreams, they come true. It can happen to you if you're pure in heart. You know, it's the happy dreams coming true because there's no person attached to those dreams. There's no personalities attached. There's no trying to orchestrate something or figure it out. Mm -hmm. How do we relate this to what's happening now with the community? Well, we've had a number of, of the ones in the community some years now, it goes back 10, 15 years, and they've been just being done through and praying, and you know how Frank and and uh, Jeffrey were just saying that a decision is a conclusion based on everything you believe. We've been praying together so much for the last 10 or 15 years to, to go through a purification process and a washing away of those unconscious beliefs so that I can make no decisions by myself, so that the Spirit can direct. Because literally, every time we're, we're praying, we're either praying for happy, forgiving dreams, or we're going to try to pull upon the past to make decisions based on the past. And now with the overseers and with the ninjas, so to speak, in our community, if we bring it back to that, they're going through a purification now where they're learning to pray. They're learning to, to make decisions not based on their, their past learning or their past reference points, but to really pray together and join together like we've been doing for the last 10 or 15 years, and they're having to pray together to really pray for the Spirit, what would you have me do? Please guide me, please direct me. I'm not going to use my past learning to try to figure this out. I, I need a higher perspective, I need guidance from the Spirit to inform all of my decisions because that's the only way that I can experience these forgiving dreams. And you could hear, even with, with, with Jeffrey and, and all the stuff that was just coming on in the last step, you know, where Frank, we're just getting ready to join together, to come together over there in Portugal. But really all it is is a prayer to the Holy Spirit. Bring on, bring me those happy dreams. Show me those forgiving dreams. Let me not have any kind of agenda or ego investment in anything that comes my way so that I may wake up every day to happy dreams and then have more happy dreams rolling my way and more because of the perspective that I'm in, not because of this attempt to make decisions based on, on past learning. It's, it's really that simple.
That's beautiful. Yeah, and when you mentioned the word personality, it, it sparked another thing because I've had this, I mean, we've done these shows right on, um, like when Bob came and did that altar thing with multiple personalities. And, and really the personality itself is the mask and we're called to be in a presence and a state of mind that almost, you know, people may still witness the personality, but you're not identified with it. Something like that. But I've had this, these experiences too where I've watched over the last months where somebody will be really serious and maybe in a, an important way where they're like really expressing or they, they think it's important and something in me like just bursts, wants to burst in laughter. And I don't know if my brother's on this show or not, but he, like he even has more extreme bursts and people would even call him inappropriate. And, and I'll look around the room and I'm, and I'm laughing and I feel like it's genuine, but none of the other elders are laughing. And I'm, <laughs> so I'm like, I like have to hold it back and I, I can't really tell if that's just I'm, I'm not taking it seriously or there's something like this impertinence or this inappropriateness. So I don't know, I'm taking a risk by even bringing it up. But it's like, <laughs> it happened last night actually joining with in the room. One of the gentlemen was just saying some things. It was so important. We were getting so deep. And there was a pressure because I felt like he might, if we didn't really join deeply, he might like, yeah, snap or something. But so, but once we were kind of starting to calm it down, he said something. It was so hilarious to me. I burst into laughter, but I looked around the room and everybody else was. And so I don't know, yeah, what, what that is. I don't even know if you can answer it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, you know, this awakening, I mean, fully awakening to the Christ is so profound that um, that's why for, for actually centuries people have been talking about Jesus because he always seemed to be 100% helpful. Uh, he was always offering 100% blessing and uh, I think many of us feel there, there was a, a laughing Jesus and there was also a Jesus that is extremely friendly, even though some of the portrayals in the Bible, you know, you, it's like turning over tables and cracking whips and a lot of us just can't imagine Jesus. Like I, I could imagine him turning over the tables at the temple because I had people, I've traveled all over the world and they go, and what about that time when Jesus got so angry in the temple, you know, when he was, he was tossing all those tables over and money was flying and animals and cages flying and everything. I said, oh, you could do that from a, a state of joy. And they said, what do you mean? I'd say, you could actually turn tables over in a state of joy. If you were making a point that, that God and spirit and devotion didn't have anything to do with money and, and reciprocity, it had nothing to do with with paying for animals and burning animals. If you were going to make a point, tossing some tables over would be a good way to make a point, but you could actually do that in joy. I said, I could throw some tables over here in total joy right now. People may not believe me. They think I've got psychotic problems or something, but no, actually, it's, it's, the, it's the state of mind underneath. And, and Jesus, there you have that picture of Jesus and the apostles behind you. That's a very high state of mind, though, to be completely appropriate in every single conceivable situation. You know, so for most people we can say that are going through this purification process, there's going to be some times when it's going to be inappropriate. And, and actually they make movies about that. Jim Carrey's made a whole career, a movie career, out of being inappropriate. Is it funny? I even laugh. I mean, I laugh at his stuff, and I know that there's a depth behind it, but he's another Canuck. He's a, another Canadian who's, who's extremely inappropriate. Just think of me, myself, and Irene. Oh my God, you gotta see that he had his alter ego playing out on there, and it was, it was funny, but it was extreme. I mean, he, he takes it to the nth degree. But it's all part of a lightness. It's like you have to feel the lightness of the spirit, even with the humor, even when something seems to be completely inappropriate and one person laughs and nobody else laughs. It's not like the spirit is like, 
bad. Mm, that's bad and wrong. The spirit is so playful, is so friendly, is so light, that it's always calling us higher and higher into these higher realms of, of, of purification. So I'm telling you, I'm telling people, is don't, you shouldn't sweat this stuff. I mean, you, it's really, we, we need to be light. We need to lighten up and we need to realize that there's a purification process going on. But unless we allow ourselves to really give ourselves over to it, that's going to, going to contract it. It's going to slow it down anyway. And, and people have to have, uh, they have to feel a sense of, of leeway and relaxed feeling about sometimes they're going to seem to be mistakes where something's taken seriously or something's given more importance than it actually deserves and so forth. But if the general movement is, is towards awakening. Uh, I've, I've had times where I've traveled around the world and I've been in lots of gatherings and people do, from the world's perspective, perspective some funny, crazy things. And it's more like, I just saw it was my lesson in overlooking. That's all it was, was overlook, overlook the error and just go into the love, the joy, go into the gratitude, go into the connection. Focus your full mind. I remember some trips I'd go to South America and it was like getting dropped into the, the Amazon at times. It felt psychologically or, or getting dropped into just a, a, a flowing river. And I basically said to Jesus, what is the purpose of this? Why do you have me down here going through these experiences? And he said, lighten up. He said, I've got you, I'm carrying you in this river. So it's a, it's, it seems like there's rapids and whatever. It's just because you're judging the river that you're having, a, a, you're getting all uh, stressed out, lighten up. The purpose of spirituality is to release stress. And the way that we release stress is by releasing judgment. And the way that we release judgment is through trust. Trusting Jesus, trusting Holy Spirit in all situations and just relaxing like you did on that day out with Jackie where it's just like, okay, I'm going to turn off all these different things. I'm not going to think about the ministry. And really, you're just giving yourself over to the mind of Jesus, the mind of the Holy Spirit saying, take me. You just take me. I'm yours. And there's something beautiful and humble about doing that. That there's something so humble about just trusting so fully in the Spirit and saying, I will not judge anything that occurs today. Nothing in the whole day. Lord, I will not be your critic today. You know? And, and it's a beautiful line from the, the workbook. And, and I think we can all do this. We just really need to practice it. We need to give ourselves over to it. So some things you're concerned maybe are inappropriate. You know, to the Spirit, I'll guarantee you that they're just funny. Probably the angels are just laughing. You may stress about it, but the angels are just laughing about the whole thing. You know, there's, there's nothing serious to the angels. Nothing. That's good, because sometimes I look around the other faces and I think, are they wanting to laugh, but they can't? Or is it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we even went out, I think Jeffrey... Took us, I've never been to this high star place, so Jackie and I went for a drink and an appetizer there with Jeffrey and Susanna. And the music was so loud in this like Western music, but, but it was so fun just sitting there. We couldn't even talk to each other, but it was really fun. And at the end, they said, Okay, now we have, we're going to do an open, I don't know, contest is the right word, audition, open audition for anyone that wants to sing for the Camas Christmas concert. And <laughs> Jeffrey's like, Oh, you could go. I was so willing, and I, I thought, well, the only one I can do is the prayer, and Emily's not here, and, and no singers, Svava, Leo, no one that I could do it with, and Susanna wasn't doing it. So I, I thought I could do it with the backing track, but then everyone at the table was like, I don't think it'll go so well unless your crowd is into forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> The home crowd. <laughs> it's one thing to do it in the, sing in the community. But 
it was really funny. I thought, okay, that's not really encouraging. So, yeah, I'm not gonna. Well, you know, I got the same thing. You know, I love to sing, so I'll burst out singing. I did on this show too, and uh, so I would just burst out with singing, and and I just find I have so much joy with it. But then, oftentimes afterwards, people will write comments to me, "Don't quit your day job." Uh, but I laugh because I think, I don't even have a day job. How can I quit my day job? I, <laughs> I don't even have a job. <laughs> so how can I? See, but I think the more you get into this feeling of just feeling joyful and, and really in tune with spirit, you know, you, you don't really take anything so seriously anymore. You know, you really do laugh. I have a friend of mine, Eveline from Belgium, just wrote to me this morning. She said, uh, she said she read through my book, Unwind Your Mind, which is a, it's a big book. It took, probably took her a while. But she read through it, and then um, at the end she said, uh, thank you so much everyone who participated in the production of this book. It shook me up from the roots. I cried and cried, but the result is great, exclamation. I can't stop laughing, exclamation. One love, capitals forever. So this is great. Somebody reads the book, that's great, and then they cry and cry and cry, and it shakes them up, yeah, that happens, and then they end up loving it because they can't stop laughing. That's the best kind of recommendation I could ever hear about that book on one your mind that people I mean it's a it's like three books in one if you sit read through that whole thing and then you can't stop laughing that's that's like a, a Jim Carrey movie you you watch them and then you can't stop laughing you laugh all the way through liar liar and then they show the outtakes and you howl laughing during the out outtakes of liar liar and and you just feel lifted up and you feel like there's a gift there, somewhere underneath it. I know he went through a lot of, of, of pain in his life, he, he said, and then he, his family uh, in Canada was going through a lot of intensities, and so he just found this humor coming through him. I think he just started, probably at a young age, started channeling humor. And then, like Robin Williams, he just channeled it, and channeled it, and channeled it. And just like the Beatles, they started channeling love songs, you know. They were just a bunch of four guys from Liverpool in the middle of England just start to channel love songs and then it has a huge impact on the awakening, probably more than any of us can really realize. And, and I feel like we just have to stay open that there's a much bigger picture here and not always try to, to be so hard on ourselves and so harsh on ourselves, even when we're trying out new things, even if it seems to look silly or people say don't quit your day job or whatever they, the comments you get, don't let that hold you back either. I, I haven't let it hold me back, I still sing. <laughs> I remember when you first told me you were going to do a singing tour, I was like, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you and I know. We have, we, when we have Emily or Svava, some of these singers with us, we we, we can, it makes it a lot easier, but, you know, the Holy Spirit send us some help. <laughs> okay, I had one more question that went through my mind, it's back again, is, um, do you know in the Course it says, uh, don't question your brother, actually, and there's a line, I don't know if that's the exact quote, or, or don't, do not confound your brother, don't question him, and a lot of times I've taken that to mean like an overt, why did you da da da? Why da da da? Or, or even maybe more subtle things like trying to get at their motivation to like prove them wrong or something like that. Th those would be obvious, overt. Don't question your brother. But in this prayer to keep deepening in mastery through love, Kirsten actually sent me right before she flew over to Japan, where she is now. Yeah, she just sent me these beautiful list of lines that she had the Spirit give her in in her practice at Strawberry to really step back and let Ricky and, and others take it and yet like be a presence and available. And one of the lines was, was just simply um, support others in learning their lesson, whatever they need to learn. And another one was don't get in and do it, but just 
help the answers come from within. So, so when I think of practicing that, like I'll have a lunch table meeting and I'll go in and I know there's some things to get clear or that are unresolved in my mind with regards to specifics. And so I know that I could just say, da, 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 why this or please be careful of this or watch out for this, but it's always about the healing of the mind and to inspire from within. So I'll ask questions, kind of hoping that the mind will be able to see it for themselves if you ask the questions in the right way. But, and that's worked at times in the past, but more than half the time now it's not working and it almost feels like there's, there's an attack or they like unconsciously know where I'm going to go and so the defenses come up way before then. <laughs> it's like, back before off. you get to the punchline. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think maybe that's questioning my brother. So I'm like, how do you... I guess maybe I'm answering my own question, but the only way to inspire is to be a demonstration. But is that attack too, even that kind of questioning? So yeah, it's like maybe this is just being hard. But. Well, I think, I think it's always in the context. For example, you know, when Jesus says, do not correct a brother, you know, do not question him, do not confound him, he's talking more, that's more at the beginning of the text, and he's talking more in general uh, people have, we have a lot of interactions with a lot of people. Imagine like at work, at restaurants, at home, for many people, unless they live in a cloistered monastery or a cloistered convent and they just don't speak at all, most people have quite a lot of encounters. And basically all I think Jesus is saying is there is step back, let, let me lead the way and you just want to offer a blessing. Offer blessings wherever you go. Uh, in the, in the supermarket, you know, even when, when somebody's, when there's a long line or somebody gives you the wrong change or it doesn't matter what the circumstances are, he's basically saying, I want to come through you and offer a blessing. And, and that, when you travel a lot, you do get a huge amount of opportunities just with flight attendants and pilots and, and people in grocery stores, laundry mats, wherever you go, you can just, you can just be in that happy vibe where you're just showing up and you, it doesn't even matter the words, you can be talking about the weather or whatever, but there's just a lightheartedness where you're just basically saying that the namaste, you know, the, the spirit in me blesses the spirit in you. Imagine like Gandhi going around all over South Africa and then all, all around India and just offering the namaste. That's, that's basically what Jesus is meaning. Now there is a different context, for example, in spiritual community, it's a, it's a different context where, whereby you have a bunch of people that are, that are showing up to live near you because they want to wake up, they want to forgive. That's their only purpose. That they're not pursuing all these grand fantasies in the world, which is really what the ego is all about, just making up a false world and pursuing grand fantasies. They're actually here because they want to discern, they want the bigger picture, they're asking for help. I, I'm here in the studio and Linda's right here with me and she was telling me recently, a few days ago, that she had a, a, a rough week. It, she was getting into the doer and taking on a lot of, of stuff in terms of being the doer and t personal responsibility. And she said, and then Jason did a morning call with us and she said, I really like when Jason brings in the bigger picture to our calls because we can get so focused on the decisions of the day-to-day -day decisions and so focused on the parameters and all this stuff around the decisions and then Jason was coming and he was bringing in the bigger picture and, and she was uplifted by that. And I think I can say that about a lot of people that you're working with, that if you know the truth, they're actually uplifted by your presence bringing in a, more of a discernment, more of a bigger picture. That's why they showed up here. They don't want to just go through and talk about logistics all day on long phone calls. They actually enjoy you coming on. You're, you're a blessing. You bring a presence onto the, the call. And that's why they're here. They're here. They're counting on you to bring the bigger picture. They're counting on you to bring from your broader experience, you know, some helpful things that brings them back to, oh yeah, that's why I'm here, that's what it's all about. They're lifted up. 
And I hear that a lot too when I go out with somebody to have a lunch with somebody or whatever, even if they're in, in some depression or they're going through struggles or whatever, and then at the end of the lunch, two hours have gone by, they say, I feel so much happier. I feel so much more expanded. Oh my gosh, my heart is lifted up. When they say those things to me, I know that the Spirit is just pouring through me and it's, it's nurturing, and we may talk about specifics, but, but there's a presence of love. So that's a little different context than this thing. Like when, when you're just, when I'm just traveling, I'm out there and I'm meeting a lot of people that I've never met before, you know, waitresses, flight attendants, uh, service people in a hotel, uh, and people that I'm just meeting sometimes for the first time, maybe we know each other digitally through a YouTube video or Facebook or something like this, but we're meeting and we're just rejoicing. But I'm just there to offer blessings, blessings, blessings. Just let the blessings roll out and flow across the whole earth. And yet, I have had those times when I'm working with what the world calls students, where people have come and they've dedicated their whole life to spiritual awakening, and they will even say, please point things out. If you see something oh, yeah. going on, please don't yeah. just skip over it. Please point it out. And to me now, those are overt invitations. And when you start to get overt invitations from people, that is a very different context. You can ask, the Spirit can ask questions through you. The Spirit can point things out because it's, it's two people joining together and there's a a, a joining like, please, we want to awaken as fast as possible. So please, Spirit, use us in a way that will clear away the darkness in, in the most rapid way. So I, th I do think it's a matter of context. Mm. Wow, it's beautiful. I totally forgot. They, many actually literally said that directly to me, <laughs> even the one I was referring to. Yeah. And it's like, it's an involuntary nature or whatever that's wow yeah that's like the answer when somebody asks for it you just are being letting that come through it's beautiful that is beautiful because i remember when we had our big group meeting like with the overseers ninjas and elders up at the monastery and then somewhere on the camera i remember i started out just expressing like because we'd had a meeting a separate elders meeting first before and i was like how is this ever going to work if energetically and and I don't know, somehow Jackie actually answered. She said something around specifics. That specifics are are the answer. And it was just like the hierarchy is really in my mind, so to speak, and and the spirit is gonna use a lot of specifics that we're all gonna be able to join on, which is really reflective of of God or the guidance. And in that joining, that is how we undo the hierarchy, and that is the answer. And it is my role to not hold back on what it is I'm hearing, as if waiting for them to feel it is the gift. And it's waiting and giving a chance for prayer, but not holding back on the, the guys. So, yeah, it's, I'm just even feeling it now as I say it. So. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of examples um, of a lot of artists and a lot of musicians that if they hadn't really given themselves full permission to just go for it, um, then the art would have never happened. I mean, I'm looking at that beautiful painting, the Last Supper painting behind you, and, and I was just reminded recently that um, Shakespeare or uh, da Vinci and a lot of the great artists throughout history, musicians and artists, they had patrons. That's how it worked. They the patron had a lot of money, they would give money to the, to the artist or the musician and, the, and they would make the most beautiful music, this, the Mozarts, Beethovens and on and on, or the most beautiful paintings, the most beautiful art, and maybe there still was some egoic things like, well, yeah, I'm supporting them, that's, that's my artist, you know, the, the ego could come in and try to claim like, yep, you hear that music? I paid for it. You know, the ego will try to claim even for its patronage and everything, but, but even in terms of spirituality now, um, the, Lisa just came across this new site uh, yesterday and she's, she came sliding in like Kramer, you know, where she's all fired up. She says, you've got to see this new website. And, 
And I'm like, okay, what's the new website? And it was like, I think it was called Patreon.com. And she said, it's a new fad, it's taken over the world. And I said, oh, okay, I never heard of Patreon.com. So I checked it out, and it's got the, the patron part, but it's a little bit Patreon. And you go and you travel and shine your light and share your gifts all over the world, and people sign up as patrons for a dollar, three dollars, and this and this. And she's like, it's the coolest thing. She said, you can just, I've talked to Laverne about it already, and you, we could just go around and, and shine our light and this and this, and then people, they just donate to support you on your Patreon uh, website. And I said, that sounds cool for the whole, for the whole ministry. <laughs> I can say everybody, everybody can go do these visitations like I'm doing. Just go show up and share your wisdom, shine your light, and, and then so this morning, this, you know, she sent me a, an email. She said, here's an example. Gary, Renard, and Cindy are on Patreon.com and they have like, I don't know, 230 some patrons. And I'm like, there you go. But it's whatever floats your boat. I mean, you, you just have to shine your light, share your joy, and trust that it's not really patrons that are providing for you. It's the Spirit. It's what Jesus said 2,000 years ago that you know, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, he said, and all else will be added unto you. This is just a, a modern day technical, technological version of the same thing that Jesus taught 2,000 years ago, that, if, that this is a holy function you have, that to be happy is no small thing. God's will is for perfect happiness for you, and if you're happy, and you're fulfilled, and you're content, and you shine that and share that, then you shouldn't. You should take no thought for what you should wear, what you should eat. Take no thought for the morrow. Let the morrow take care of the morrow. Be in your present joy and let everything show up uh, to support that, because it's really the Holy Spirit and Jesus that are actually doing the supporting, and the the people and the places and things. You know, we're going to join uh, Lisa and Frank and I. We're just going to have a party over there in. Uh, in Europe, you know, now that the hurricane has passed and some trees got knocked down and this and that, we're going to land and then we're off we are on, on a, joy, a joyful, miraculous experience of extending love with, with whoever we meet, wherever we go. Uh, there's a backdrop, you might say, of maybe finding a house that could serve and some property as the center over there. And, and that would be a blessing too. I mean, I just got an email from Sevi in Greece right before. She's so happy we're coming, but, but she's, she wants to shine her light. There's a lot of dear beloved ones over there in Europe that just want to just shine their light. And I just see all that we're doing is all part of the same momentum and movement for people to get in to share their gifts, share mm -hmm. their joy, share their happiness, let go of the pressure, let go of the stress, let go of the concerns of being a human being on planet Earth. Let go of this reciprocity that, that you have to keep exchanging horizontally to do God's will. You don't. You have to stay in alignment with the Holy Spirit to let God's will extend through you. You don't need, you don't need to make it political. You don't need to make it interactional. You don't have to make it horizontal where where you're trying to do God's will, but still living by the laws of the ego, learn to live in divine providence, learn to live in, in God dependence and trust in God, and happily go your way singing your song, sharing your love and your joy. It's really, that's the simple message that we're sharing. And so uh, we'll try to broadcast some of these things too. Like Even though I'm going to a different time zone, a different continent, doesn't mean we can't still have these these beautiful uh, Sunday parties. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, we had, I don't know how many, 57 people, and if there's, I don't know if people know, but they, I think you heard it on Jeffrey's shows, Dave and Lisa are flying. Are you still flying Tuesday, do you think, or? Yeah, we'll, we'll fly Tuesday morning, we'll go to LA, then we'll go over to uh, JFK in New York City, then We'll fly across the ocean and, and meet up with Frank uh, in the morning, about 10.15 in the morning, uh, we, we land over in Portugal 
on uh, Wednesday morning. So, uh, so from Wednesday on, we're, we're footloose and fancy free over in, uh, in Europe. And no, no real plans yet or just kind of floating, so wow. No, I, th I think we'll go and we'll, we'll drive down to the southern Portugal area and we'll, we'll stay with our friends Jan and Ellen who were just part of uh, our, our mystery school and we'll stay in their house for a couple of days and then th I think uh, they, that house is rented out the following week, so there we go. We're just going to be uh, loose. We might go uh, rent a space down in that area to use as a base. Frank, Frank's looked into all that, uh, is just even as a base to kind of launch out of, but uh, that's that. And then I, I do plan to go to South Africa there at the beginning of, uh, of November too. So Catherine and, and our friends down, down, down there. It's like long flights, but you're, you're into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a meditation. <laughs> and I see there's Stan and Sue and Svava up there tuned in. Svava's recording her first album, and, and oh, there they are. They've welcomed Svava in, so beautiful. How's it going up there, Svava? Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. You can hear me? Yeah. Oh, you unmuted us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's such a joy. We've just been working on one song this morning, just slowly getting into it. And yeah, yeah it's, it's wonderful. It's a bit cold here, but... Oh, can <laughs> Yeah. It's not as cold as Iceland. No, yeah. no, not as cold as ice to him. If you notice, I'm quite warm at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> A comedian in the group there. Yeah. Canadian so, comedians. Uh, <laughs> oh, what, what was that? <laughs> comedians. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've been laughing a lot at ourselves. <laughs> at our seriousness. We had a we had a very we had a very serious discussion about seriousness this morning. <laughs> and we decided, my first wife left me many years ago, and she said, Stan, you're a beautiful person. Lighten up. Get a sports car. <laughs> so Sue, Sue was commenting on how serious I am. And I said, no, I'm, I've just learned to pass it over to you. The Holy Spirit go through me, so I don't have to do anything anymore. <laughs> Only he better. was very serious about how serious he isn't. <laughs> and, Light up. And, and we're recording, and I'm, I'm in, because I'm the master, you see. Actually, no, don't tell anyone. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. But uh, I'm, I'm telling Swaba. Well, if you make a mistake, it's on the tape forever, and you'll always regret it. So we have to be perfect. And then we decided we couldn't do that anymore. <laughs> After a few tries, <laughs> oh, perfectionism. We're letting it all go. so we're letting it all go. And we decided from this moment forward, we're just going to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's good. That's, good. Yeah. that's so beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. It's actually not cold here at all. It's lovely. It's beautiful. It's sunny. It's beautiful. It's cold is when it's minus 30. Today, it's sunny and warm. Yeah. It's almost seven. Almost, yeah, it's almost, almost seven. seven. <laughs> Up in Muskoka. <laughs> and we did have a beautiful winter coat. Yeah. You should show your socks. I got my warm sock. <laughs> <laughs> and warm jammies and yeah it's everything is giving i got everything i need yeah beautiful for your talk jason yeah, that was beautiful. beautiful and thank you david for your beautiful wisdom it's, it's very appropriate i've gone i've had a i've got a patreon site i have one okay i have no sponsors <laughs> <laughs> he has no patrons. I know. Well, you're on TV now, so that may change. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, thank you for this bless. Thank you yeah, for this blessing. Cool. We'll be all serious now. Thank you, David. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. 
Maybe you can show me gallery view so I can see him. Yeah. Because I think we've got some people also on the gallery view. I, Frank, is, I, of course, is still on there. And then uh, is Miriam still on? You know, Miriam wrote me from Holland, and I thought I saw your red hair on there earlier today. But, um, you know, yeah, we're just getting these most beautiful uh, messages just when we're preparing to, uh, to head over there. And, and Miriam wrote this um, beautiful message to me um, that once I had just posted about coming over to, uh, there's Miriam, once I had just posted about coming over to Europe and us starting a center over there, um, she said, one thing I do know, I want to live in with and for God all the time, exclamation. I feel ex in excitement inside about this extraordinary good news, exclamation. About the time of receiving this message from you, I was crying out to the Holy Spirit for help and clarity about the next step. Oh, David, could this be Spirit's answer about his plan for me? Like you said during the Holy Instant Retreat, desire truth and love above, above all else, exclamation. Things have deepened so much the last two months. I cannot go back to a rather, quote, normal life. I'll pray for further clarity. And then she also wrote that she was so happy, Frank, that we're coming over there that she got so joyful uh, and it took her a couple, of, about this message of having a new center in Europe, I feel joyful and so ex excited. It took a few days to let, let it all calm down inside of me, to experience what would be left of the initial enthusiasm. The ridiculous thing that won't leave my mind and heart is that I feel a longing to be involved from the very start of it all. I even imagined about meeting you and Lisa already next week in Lisbon. Ha 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 ha. Feels necessary to express these thoughts to you like an urgency. It's all about the Spirit's plan. I know, I only know I want to collaborate for the love of God in whatever way He wills. And I feel relieved in having found the courage to express what is in my heart at the moment. So to me, Miriam, this is so beautiful because this is, this is the core of how it happens for all of us. We feel this huge upswell of love coming. You were just down here in Mexico, at Quantico, right over at where, where Frank's house over there, and now there's some kind of connection and swirl happening where you're just giving yourself permission to say, I want to live a life of joy. That's what this whole show, this whole uh, show has been about, and, and the last step about forgiving dreams. We have to realize we are worthy of that love. We want to participate and we want to just behold happy dreams because we don't wake up from dark dreams into eternity. We have to wake up from dark dreams into happy dreams and then off into eternity. And that's the phase we're in now. That's what all, Living Miracles is all about. It's about living the miracles, diving in. And so I see you there, Frank. Frank. We may be seeing Miriam somewhere along the way. She's, she's just got all this bursting joy, and she's, she's ready. <laughs> and Frank, maybe you can share. I, I, I did write to my friends in Portugal, and, and they were like, oh, hurricane would be no problem. And then they, they assured me this morning a few trees are down. <laughs> and so... So, uh, but it's mostly Lisbon where we land and to the north, and we're on our happy dream uh, trip to the south. Uh, so, I, I think the way is clear for us. Yes, I, I have, uh, you know, I didn't, I was actually more relying on your information because you, you seem more on top of it. I just called Lisa and I said, uh, uh, because the realtor wanted to know if we're coming or not. And so, um, you know, the, the, the storm has passed. I don't know much about it. I just, you know, it was just a little doubt thought in my mind, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but it's gone. So I'm packed. <laughs> very good. Yeah, yeah, well, very excited. Good yeah. night tomorrow and then 
we'll just join together and uh, it's wide open for us. It's really just about sharing the, all the, the connection, the love, the joy with everyone we meet and then trusting that the spirit will show the way. And uh, so we, we don't have to like make anything happen even. That's it's kind of relaxing to think about. Places to stay. We have, it's all lined up for the places to stay and yeah. Yeah. So beautiful. Lisa's going to go on her to dream tour with Frank driving down from Switzerland to get your truck down all the way to Portugal. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, that, yeah that's going to be a, a road trip. <laughs> Beautiful. That, that we can take, take uh, a few days to do that. It's, it's kind of far, but we can take five, six days, you know. That'll be fun. I love road trips. <laughs> <laughs> and so does Lisa. Yeah, she's excited. She's very excited. Okay, well, do you have anybody else in mind, David? Or might... Uh... Where's our thing? Oh, Susan's up there in the monastery. Oh, there's Sarah. Hi, Sarah Humor. <laughs> oh. It's great. Oh, there's Stephen, Christopher. Well, if nobody else is uh, bursting with their heart, I'll probably take this as a sign to <laughs> wrap up another episode of From the Bottom Up. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, we'll just, we'll stay in touch and, and hopefully you know, there could be something unfolding, like I said, in, in uh, maybe in Sweden or maybe in uh, the Netherlands or maybe even uh, over there in uh, Queensland, uh, Australia or something. We're just kind of stepping in, taking the next step and letting it all be shown. But I love these Sundays. It's a way for the whole, our whole family all over with all the smiling faces and the, <laughs> the waves and the blown kisses to stay in contact and so yeah i appreciate that I, it's always it touches my heart to see all the the beloveds i see there's susan jameson's working on the book getting the this moment is your miracle ready and uh, you know there's so many things happening in so many aspects of of the light shining so we're just uh looking forward to seeing you all along the way and thank you for all your love and your well wishes yeah. There's Bridget. I th we may see her over there in Sweden. Yeah. Helena. Helena. Yeah. Beautiful. Hunter. Yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Love you guys. Thanks for joining our Sunday shows. And I guess, Frank, you've got a meditation coming up. So. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, David, for being on it. it Thank you. Thank you for having me.